What's good, everyone? It's the one and only NY Phenom. If you guys enjoy NFL, NBA content, and one season gaming content in the near future, give this video a like. And if you're new, go and subscribe to the channel while you're at it. Now, let's go ahead and get into this video. Alright, so there, there goes the rewards. <laughs> there goes the rewards for the 2018 2019 NBA season. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I didn't even know that the war show was yesterday. Like I didn't know until yesterday, until I, um, until I turned on first take early um, yesterday morning. Um, they got before I get into all the reactions of who won the awards and all. First of all, I want to get this out the way, man. We gotta cut it out with this award show, man. This award show, it's just not good, man. I, I, I just, I, I didn't watch it. And it's not entertaining. Like I watched the past, I watched the two before yesterday, and they were like whatever. But what happened to just letting the team, um, the team that um, like let the let the um cities enjoy the players that won the awards. Like I, I'm kind of, I kind of miss seeing like the MVP hold the MVP trophy in front of the city that he plays for, man. Like, that was dope. Like, this, now, it's just... It's just not cool, man. And you dragging this award thing. Like, it's... Nobody cares about it. Like, I didn't care about the award show yesterday because it was so late in the season. Like, I, I'm pretty much done with last season. Like, last season was last season. I'm looking forward to next season. And it's just, like, the after... It's, like, after that, and, like, nobody honestly cares. But it's, like, at this point... Everybody's looking forward to the next season, so they need to go back to the old format with, where they just announced the awards after like the first round of the playoffs or whatever. So, I mean, that's pretty much all I really want to say on that. Just a little rant about the awards show. But anyway, to the topic at hand, I just want to make a quick video on you know the, my reaction of of who won the awards. Um, let's start off with Rookie of the Year. Um, Luka Doncic uh, won Rookie of the Year. Uh, the finalists were uh, Trey Young, uh, DeAndre Ayton, and Luka Doncic. And there was really no surprise that Luka Doncic won the Rookie of the Year award. Uh, there was some talk about Trey Young because he did have that gut month, like around All Star Weekend, was it? Was it January, February? Uh, Trey Young just won a run. Trey Young won a run. And he played like some of the best ball. Like, pretty much you could make a case after All Star Weekend, Trey Young was the best rookie. But I mean, let's keep it a buck. Luka Doncic, I mean, he started off the year hot and he pretty maintained, uh, maintained that. And, you know, I got I got a shout out to Luka Doncic, man. He did his thing. But Trey Young, Trey Young is a boss, too, man. Trey Young is definitely a boss. Um, I had some concerns about him coming into the NBA, but dude is so talented, man. Like, it, in my opinion, I had Jimmer for death vibes going into the year, but I mean, this dude has skill. Like the way that he can play that pick and roll, and this dude not only can he shoot it, this dude can pass the rock. Like I think that's his best skill is passing the rock. Like I know the comparisons of him going to the NBA was like Steph Curry, but in my opinion, he reminds me of someone like Steve Nash. I get more Steve Nash feels than uh, Steph Curry feels. I mean, I know he he has limitless range with his shot, but the way how he just passes that ball, especially in the pick and roll, like when him and when Trey Young and John Collins are in that pick and roll, is deadly. So shout out to Trey Young. Also, another underrated part of Trey Young is how he attacks the rim. Like he's really good at attacking the rim and going up with that floater. So Trey Young is the truth. And um, also DeAndre Aiden is pretty underrated, man. I feel like. He's not getting talked about. Um, part of that is him being a big man. And, you know, it, uh, it, I mean, unless your name is Joel Embiid or Anthony Davis, it's really hard to market big man in today's game. But, I mean, DeAndre Aiden played really well. He was pretty much a double double machine without even getting the ball that much. So I think all three of those players have real potential to be something great in the NBA. But that's the rookie of the year. Let's go to defensive player of the year. Uh, the finalists for the defense player of the year was. Giannis Antetokounmpo, Paul George, and Rudy Gobert, and surprisingly, they gave it to Rudy Gobert, which is not surprising because we all know that he's probably the best big man defender in the NBA, just the way he can defend the rim, and he, he literally scares people to go to the rim, 
And, you know, <laughs> not that many big men uh, can really do that in the NBA. So, shout out to Rudy Gobert. He still deserved it. I was just shocked because it just felt like the entire narrative was going with a uh, was going with either Paul George or Giannis for the defensive play of the year. But um, I really can't complain with Rudy Gobert being defensive play of the year. I mean, back to back. Yeah, I mean, he's earned it, man. Like, to be honest with you, man, like, you know, he has to be a top a, a top five, maybe top three defender in the NBA point blank period on any given day. So, you know, Rudy Gobert des- um, deserved it. I'm not saying Paul George and Giannis didn't. But um, it was just interesting, man. It was interesting to see um, Rudy Gobert become back-to-back defensive player of the year. So that was great to see. Um, on to coach of the year. Um, I don't remember the finalists of it. I think it was Doc Rivers. And I want to say, who else was it? Who else was the finalist for it? Was it Mike Malone? I'm sorry, man. Like, <laughs> man, it, I'm just not look. See, the thing is, bro, this is another reason why you got, they got to move this um, back to how it was to the old format, man. Like, nobody's really keeping up with last season, man. Like, <laughs> nobody's keeping up with last season, um, you know. But um, Mike Bullenhoser won the coach of the year. Really, no surprise about that. We know that. Um, the, the success the Milwaukee Bucks had this year. I mean, winning the East, um, winning the East, and they when it, when we were coming when we were you know going into the 2018-2019 season, um, you know the Milwaukee Bucks. A lot of people are ranking the Milwaukee Bucks as like the fifth or sixth. 16. That was like their projections of coming out the East. Like they were like a like the fifth or sixth seed for most people going into the season. But I mean, he just came out and dominated. And you know, um, Mike Budenholzer. I mean, he deserves a lot of credit for that. Of course, we know um, that the previous year they didn't have a, a real head coach because they fired Jason Kidd um, midway through the season. And I want to say something about Jason Kidd, man. I know a lot of people are saying Jason Kidd was a bad coach and all, but like Jason Kidd, in my opinion, was a very underrated coach. I know he did, he had some, he did some things that were like, what you, like, what you're doing, like, that makes no sense. But like, you know, Jason Kidd, in my opinion, like, especially on the defensive side, he was a really good coach. And another thing that Jason Kidd did and so does that's very underrated is how he develops players. Like, Jason Kidd really played a big part of Giannis Antetokounmpo's development, and we'll we'll speak more on that later. But you know, I think that's part of the reason why um, Jason Kidd, why the Lakers wanted Jason Kidd. Now it would make more sense if they had kept Alonzo for Jason Kidd, because I think that would be like I think that'd be like a great a great person to develop what Lonzo would be Jason Kidd, but of course we know about the Anthony Davis trade, so, um, you know, Jason Kidd, I mean, he's really good at developing players, and I think he did a really good job with doing that, but Mike Blue and Jose, great coach, uh, pretty much no questions about coach of the year, I, I think Doc Rivers could have made like the best case because we know the Clippers weren't the most talented team, but, you know, <laughs> Doc Rivers had those players playing hard every single night on both sides of the floor, especially that defensive side, man. I mean, Doc Rivers did a lot of great things. Matter of fact, I can make a case that this is Doc Rivers' best coaching year, and that's saying something because Doc Rivers uh, has had a bunch of great coaching years. Like, we already know about him winning that championship in 08, and, you know, this those those teams that he had with the Clippers, but this this previous season, man, he, he had, <laughs> Doc Rivers did something on the coaching, did something really, um, did really well when it came to head coaching. I mean, we had to put him possibly in the top five of head coaches. Is that is that a stretch? I don't think so. But um, yeah, that's pretty much how I almost speak with the coach of the year. Now, let's go to... Most improved player of the year. Let's go to most improved player of the year. And 
I believe the finalists were D'Angelo Russell, Paul Siakam, and Buddy Hill. Yeah, I think that's what it was. I could be wrong. I could be wrong with the Buddy Hill one, but I believe he was a finalist. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to make sure real quick, make sure that Buddy Hill... No, my fault. My fault. It wasn't Buddy Hill. It was De'Aaron Fox. So it was De'Aaron Fox, De'Andre Russell, and Paul Siakam. And there was some little debate about this one. Really, the the real debate was with Paul Siakam and De'Andre Russell. And I think you could have made a really good case with both of them. Like, De'Andre Russell, um, you know, there was some doubts of him being a real... Uh, starting point guard in this NB in the NBA, and could he make that leap to the All Star with it being a contract year? You know, before the season, DeAndre Russell wanted to get paid like Devin Booker because I mean that's how he felt. He felt like he was an All Star level player. You know, that wasn't that wasn't how a lot of people felt going into the season. But I mean, he proved he proved that he proved the doubt is wrong. Now the Brooklyn Nets to to um to the playoffs. Um, I made it to the All-Star game. So, I mean, shout out to the man D'Angelo Russell, man, from being doubted from the Lakers and leading Brooklyn to the playoffs. So, there's a real case. De'Aaron Fox had a really, really good season. Um, led, led, led the Kings to nearly a playoff, nearly to the playoffs. I believe they were like the ninth seed. And... Had a really good season, but the winner, of course, is Paul Siakam. And I mean, Paul Siakam. I mean, he, he, um, <laughs> Paul Siakam, man. He really, he really showed up, man. And th- that was that was surprising. I, we always, well, at least I knew that Paul Siakam had some potential. Like there was some p- potential that I saw from him, but like this, the way how he played on both sides of the floor, like. I mean, do deserved it. Do deserved it, and it shows in um in the finals too. I mean, he had a great game one and a great game six. So I have no issue with Paul Siakam being most improved player of the year. Um, definitely deserved it. Definitely deserved it. Um, am I missing any? I'm I'm seeing if I'm missing any before um we go to the MVP. Um, Derrick Rose from Comeback Play of the Year. Um, or was it Hart? Wait a minute. Or was it Comeback Play of the Year? Is that what they called it? I'm not sure that's what they call. Oh yeah, Six Man of the War. I uh, can't forget Six Man of the Year. Um, the finalists were Demontis Sabonis, Montrez Harrell, and Lou Williams, and of course they give it to Lou Williams. Now we might have to call the award the Lou Williams Award. I mean, this is his third six man a year, and I know I know a while back that like the conversation a few years ago was calling it the, the Jamal Crawford um, Award, but man, Lou Williams is stacking up right there with Jamal Crawford, man, and it's funny because both of them had. Six men a year success with the Clippers and with other teams. So, man, Lou Williams and Jamal Crawford, man, they are really some of the best six men of all time. So, shout out to that man, Lou Williams. Um, and I mean, it's like he's doing that all, all on like a three year, 23 million deal, like severely underpaid. But Lou Williams just gets busy, man. We know how he scores that ball. Scores the ball, <laughs> scores the ball like Lou Will, man. <laughs> but anyway, Lou Will was the sixth man of the year, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Now let's go ahead and get into the big award, which is the MVP award, and um, we're gonna speak about um, about this. Now, of course, the finalists were Paul George, James Harden, and Giannis Antetokounmpo, and you could have made a case for. Well, you know, for you guys that are new, I, I made a video around four months ago when the MVP debate was really hot. It was really hot on the streets, and, you know, it felt like everybody had a case. This was during a time where Paul George was hot, 
he, he was just scoring 45 and 40 every single game while playing lockdown defense. It was like the, it, he was in his, he was in his Michael Jordan mode at that point. Like, there was a, there was a time where Paul George just, was just money and just locking down everyone. It was a Paul George show, but we all knew that Paul George after that, after that spurt, he kind of cooled off and it became a James Harden and Giannis, uh, pretty much a debate about who was going to win MVP out those two. Now, I want to speak for James Harden real quick. Of course, we know that the Rockets just started off slow. Like in de- by December, they were like 11 and 14. But then James Harden won a run, scoring 40 and 50. Pretty much, it felt like every single night. Um, just leading his team, 50 point, two 50 point triple doubles. And just, you know, just pretty much giving it to the, um, to the other teams. Like, uh, there was times where Chris Paul was hurt, Clint Capella was hurt. Like, a good example for that was, I believe it was around January when the Rockets played the Warriors and James Harden hit that game winner. So, and you know, James Harden put like 35 points a game this year, like the most points scored by a single player um, in the season since Kobe Bryant in the 05 06 season. So, there was a lot of cases you can make for Harden, man. But look, Giannis deserved this MVP, man. Giannis deserved this MVP. I know a lot of James Harden fans will be like, but what? He had a, a solid all-around team. They, the, the Rockets were 11-14. And James Harden, they brought, he brought them back and made them a, 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 a top seed in the West. A top four seed in the West. But look, first of all, why, why does that... Why should Giannis get punished for the MVP award for his team not starting off slow? Giannis came off the gate. He just came off the gate ready to play, man. And just because Harden started off slow and then got into things and heated up. And, you know, Harden did heat up. Did heat up. But, you know, Giannis came out strong, 27, 12. And, you know, a few bucks a game, and I'm not a big stat person, but I mean, there's a way how Giannis is just dominating the paint. Like, I, I haven't seen nobody dominate the paint like that since, like, Shaq. <laughs> like, the way that Giannis was dominating the paint, and, like, you know, a lot of people like to say that he can't shoot a three point shot, he doesn't have a perimeter shot, he's not a, he's not a real shooter. So he's not a real offensive threat. He he can't he can't score like Harden from the perimeter. And look, so it's the MVP award. It's not the most offensive skilled award. Two different things. And Giannis he dominated uh, in the paint throughout the entire season. Nobody could stop him. And I haven't even been talking about the defensive side. <laughs> Giannis was a defensive player of the year finalist. We'll never see Harden in that, you know. But, you know, I'm not going to dog Harden. Harden has improved on the defensive side throughout the years. Um, I will, I'll say maybe a – can I call him an average defender now? Maybe maybe he's right. He's a tier below that. He's still a below average defender. But it's still better than what he was a few years back. So, salute to him on improving the defensive side. But Giannis is just a beast on both sides of the floor. Led the Bucks to a 60 win, uh, had 60 win, um, 60 wins throughout the year, first seed, and and you know he he deserved MVP point blank period. And I love a lot of people from the say, well he did he didn't have the best uh, performance in the playoffs. Yo, know, this a regular season award, and I could say the same thing about Harden. Harden got put out by the Clay Thompson and Golden. State. Uh, and Clay Thompson and Steph Curry led Warriors in six without KD. So I can say the same thing about him. So anyway, I don't want to make this video too long because I have a bunch of videos. Uh, I have a lot of videos that's going to be out today. So I just want to go ahead and do I just want to cut it out with this, um, with this, um, with this Giannis hate, because I've been seeing a lot of Giannis hate for some reason, and that's crazy. But anyway, you know, another thing, they said, if it was, if this was, if this was for playoffs too, Kawhi Leonard would be MVP, so 
Let's cut it out, man. Giannis deserved MVP and salute to him, man. Salute to the Greek freak, man. And, you know, I expect big things from the Greek freak, man. Um, in my opinion, he's climbing up to that top five player in the NBA. I'm, I might have to do a ranking with ranking players. Um, but he's definitely closing into that top five if he's not already in it. So, salute to Giannis, man. Salute to everybody that won the, won the award, man. Salute to him, man. But um, that's pretty much it, man. If you guys enjoy NFL NBA content, want to see some gaming content in the near future, give us a like. And if you're new, go subscribe to the channel while you're at it. I'm the Phenomenal One, and I'm out. Deuces.